Hi everyone, welcome to week 10. This week we're going to be rethinking the position of the human in early childhood education by considering post-human and new materialist theories. So post-human theory conceptualizes learning as an intraactive, more than multiple experience, an event that emerges beyond the confines of human bodies. So here, learning is not solely located within the individual child, but rather it's an affect um, where multiple bodies, including non-humans, encounter each other and something is generated. So there's a space where these meeting bodies interact and are altered in some way and a response or a capacity to act is generated. So while many post-structural theorists um, such as Foucault, who we've discussed, and Jacques Derrida, um, and feminist theorist Judith Butler have investigated the ways in which power is exercised and upheld in the domain of language between persons, as we've studied, post-human scholars um, would further this thinking by arguing that it's not only humans that participate in the movement of discourse. So thinking beyond humanism and linguistics, Post-humanism would think that there are multiple force relations which propel and transform bodies, humans and more than humans. Um, so they draw on the Deleuzian concept of becomings, where a body's trajectory is altered as it comes into contact with another in an encounter. And this is where post-structural thought has shifted toward post-human performativity. Children's encounters with the world are more than purely linguistic um, in changing. So a post-human uh, theoretical perspective decenters the human as the sole focus of pedagogy, and it attends um, to multiple events and multiple components of events, sorry, that are happening beyond the child as well as the child. So post-human pedagogies avoid the divisive distinction that's often um, drawn between humans and natural environments. Um, by resituating our lives within indivisible worlds, this orientation focuses upon the ways in which our past, present, and future lives are entangled with those of other beings, non-living entities, technologies, elements, discourses, forces, and landforms. And when I'm using the terms non-humans or more than humans, that's what I'm referring to, these, these other than human beings, um, living or non-living. And why do they do this? Post-human um, theoretical perspectives trace and respond to the histories of how it is that the human subject, the dominant human subject, was created and sees this figure as a colonial projection of white masculine heteronormativity. So centering the human in pedagogy from this perspective is problematic as it continues to perpetuate knowledges that radically exclude others that do not touch this ordinary form. So rather, post-human pedagogies would uh, move toward becomings and consider learning as a multiplice event. Um, they might even actually challenge the very language of learning um, and rather consider affect, how something is, um, is activated in response to an encounter. So um, Deleuze would consider that, uh, who's an, is a post-human uh, theorist, would, would discuss how a body's trajectory in becoming is altered as it comes into contact with another in an encounter. So learning is not of the child, it's a generative change across multiple parts. And that's where this language of becoming comes in. It's not a linear growth towards the next step, but rather becoming could also be a decrease or a positive um, change. It could, it could um, occur in multiple directions um, in response to an encounter with something other than itself. So in this week's article, um, Lens Taguchi discusses ontoepistemologies, and ontoepistemologies are ways of knowing and being. So it takes epistemology, which is the study of how we know what we know, how knowledge is cultivated um, and 
um, the study of our thinking processes, and it also takes ontology, the study of being and becoming, how reality is lived, how it is that we or, or other things exist on earth, um, how things exist and perform in relation within particular social contexts. Um, so largely ontology is the study of being, while epistemology is the study of thinking. So onto epistemology then links thinking and being as inherently related. And in education, our onto epistemological beliefs ground us in our educational orientations. So for example, if we arrive at education from an epistemological orientation that sees knowledge as a truth that can be acquired through discovery and study in the pursuit of some kind of meaning, then the educational experiences that we enact, our pedagogies, will reflect that orientation. Um, so in this week's readings, um, we're walked through several perspectives of, um, of a theoretical stance in pedagogy. Um, so in Lenz Taguchi's article, he talks about um, transcendental modernist thinking, a way of being in the world that is based on objective reasoning, it's separate, there's a separation, sorry, of the human from materials, and the educator is sort of an observer. From a social constructionist perspective, that's the notion of being in discourse or being in language. Um, so language and discourse from this perspective creates the ways in which children engage with materials and how they understand their relation through the material itself. So it may not be focused, the material itself, sorry, may not be focused as having agency in the event, but attention is more made um, to the language and the languages that create understanding. Um, so from a social constructivist perspective, all knowledge is socially made. No absolute truths exist out there to be gained, but rather knowledge is made and remade through discourse and all knowledge is subjective. That is that there's no true, objective, pure, clean reasoning um, or separation from the human. But rather this notion of subjectivity has um, significant implications in the role of education and the shaping of pedagogy. Um, so from a social constructivist perspective, the self is not conceived as an entity, but as the protagonist in a biography which can contain all kinds of ambiguities and unexpected turns. So here the human still has a very strong presence in the movement of social dialogue through language. Post-humanism um, and a new materialist perspective as well considers being of the world. It unsettles a division between material and I. So here there is no I or no self, only um, bodies that are of the world and are of matter, and it unsettles a division that upholds familiar ideas of difference. Um, something is what it is because it's not that. All uh, things are singularities, all are difference, and this moves from cause and effect to multiple causes and multiple effects. So in a post-human orientation, a thing here, a material or a body, is not defined by its form, nor by its organs and its functions, nor as a substance or a subject. Um, borrowing terms from the Middle Ages or from geography, we can define it by a longitude and a latitude. And this is a Deleuzian idea as well. A body can be anything. It can be an animal, a body of sounds, a mind or an idea. It can be a linguistic corpus, a social body, a collectivity. This orientation opens up a plurality of visions of what something supposedly is toward what it might become. So within this theoretical perspective, educators pay particular attention to a doing, um, focusing more on verbs and activations, how things move, um, how things are. There's an ontological focus here in the being of it. Um, and educators in this sense aim to use language which enhances this motion, this doing, writing from the present tense with verbs over nouns, um, attending not only to the discursive, the linguistic 
um, or the epistemological, but also the doing of it, the ontological, how something is lived.